شو عم نحكي كيف اليوم بدي موت بنك مصر السياسي بيعمل لها نقاط الضعف السلام اريا اوف اوف ا 2.9 ميليون هكتيرز 57% of the movement can have a part in this plan yeah. we are most likely that there's likely going to be a severe severe opposition that will have a lot of opposition so I do not have any doubt that they will want to get in the plan to do this national policy briefing is uh, former South Africa President ANG Mechanical Take my idea one day. So 
Uh, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to say, we have four different segments of farmers. There's one acre to five acres. They don't need a tractor. They don't need power tools. They don't really need any other things. That's just not safe. So if you have mechanization centers where you can just provide them sets, you go, you plow for them, you, uh, you harrow, you, uh, you level, you plant, you spray, teach them how to manage the farms. You know what you're doing. If you look at all the investment that's been put in, fuel station, gas station, all of that, if they can just take half of that money to invest into agriculture, if our students can just say, look, I'm taking one weekend, one weekend I want to go to the farm and help farmers, you know what is going to happen with this country? So why have we not been able to embrace agriculture to that appreciable because it's obvious that agriculture contributes over 35% of one GDP. So why are you not embracing this? We keep saying that it is the backbone of the economy. Well, I think, like I said again, it's the mentality. And until we come to the realization, we as a people are the driving force of our economy. Hmm. We, the people, are the ones who will change things in the country, not just the government. The government has done a lot. The government has put structures in place for us to move agriculture. And that's why AEG Agro Mechanical, we have brought in equipment. If you go to Family Mechanization Center, you will see all types of equipment that we've brought in. It all is for agriculture. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to move from the traditional agriculture to conservation agriculture. If you look before then, our ancestors used to practice conservation agriculture, whereby they just dig the holes and plant and mulch. That's what conservation agriculture is. And what that happens, you know what happens? It helps the environment. All right, so uh, as an expert, let's get back to uh, the issue of the acute water shortage and how it's going to affect agriculture. Do you feel that it's going to uh, affect the availability of food in this country? Definitely. There's a likelihood that there will be, there will be an effect. But I think we can uh, present that by recenticide our people. You and I engage in agriculture. And I'll actually tell you that, uh, Hawa, you need to start to have a small garden. If you have a small garden, you plant, you, uh, you plant onions, you plant okra, you plant, you think that those bringing onions and okra from Burkina Faso will do it again? You can actually, you and I, the government and the people, can even stop. We don't need laws to stop eating some important rights. If we decide to go and then farm, Those bringing onions from Burkina Faso and other countries, they'll sit there and say, wow, I'm looking at the cost of transportation and then they will stop. So I think with all the facilities and the infrastructure that is in place in this country. We need to boost interest. To boost interest. Boost interest with the people. Mm. But the people so how can we achieve that? Well, I think it's education mm. and the will of the people. The question now is how can we motivate the people to get into agriculture? You see people going, they've gone to do agriculture, engineering, agri uh, 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 economics, and some of them want to run to the garden. I think it is now about time that we look into agriculture, not just to feed ourselves, but as a business. I think culturally and traditionally, we've been practicing agriculture just like, okay, I want to farm and eat. No, agriculture is a business. It's just like buying a stock. It's just like marrying a woman, you know, because you are putting an investment into it, you know. Uh, so I think there is the need that we, 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 we come back to ourselves. I'm talking, I'm not just talking about politicians, I'm not talking about the government, I'm talking about we as a people. As a people, how about focus on women who are farming? Because when you look at the statistics, it indicates that over 52% of people in agriculture are women. And most of those women are doing extremely well. And when you look, when you look critically at those women, most of them do not possess their own lands because traditionally you come into women on land. How is that also affecting? I think that's where policy comes in. Mm. And that's the role that the government needs to play. And I think they've been doing very well, whereby we have to get our traditional leaders in there and then give them some sort of education. And then let them know that there's an agency. Agency of people. 
fight against the official world day. It is, uh, it is a pride, you know what I'm saying? If we are able to educate our chiefs, to educate our peace and crowns, for them to understand that we need them. Uh, so I think that's where pride is coming from. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah, now, in the face of this prediction that has been made uh, in terms of uh, shortage of likely shortage of So what we can do as a nation is to go back to the drawing board and fix it. We don't do much time to do that to fix it. We have to do it now. I think the people need to, we need to have a nation, not just a national finance board, but national awareness and culture. We need to be taught in the classroom. We need to be taught in the, in the, in the workplace. Everyone needs to have a background. Everyone needs to go to the front not just, we need to create that as a habit now. If you look at the great United States and other industrialized countries, agriculture has been the moving force of it. So I think it's about time we as Ghanaians and Africans face the reality that there is a crisis. And if we don't um, come to ourselves as a people, Because I mean, encouraging people to go into agriculture, they have to make their own decision. Now, I mean, close to the immediate, what can we do as a nation? Well, that's what ANG is about. Mm -hmm. uh, my company, ANG, Agro Mechanical Industries, we are actually coming for your ear. And that is, we are coming out with farm services. Apart from selling the equipment, we just select you know, we sell markets, metropolitan markets. We are representing some of the agro Agro Masters. You do them. so well with that. Uh, yeah, we are, we, are, we are involved in other companies. Yeah, Agro Masters. We are the number one equipment um, manufacturer in the world. And we represent them in the rest of the world. And they are actually specialized in conservational agriculture. So um, I think we need to come up. Uh, we already have a module whereby we'll be able to provide farm services from anything from one acre to five acres. And then we also have power kit. What sort of services are you looking at? Well, we're looking at sales and we're looking at services. And those services like we plow, you know, we, we harrow, we plant the plants, we teach them how. We have consultants who are advanced that will be able to teach them how to plant the plants. And like I was saying, I'll be traveling to Cote d'Ivoire to sign an agreement with um, EST Power Tools. We are the number one manufacturers of power tools. Because most of if we look at our environment, we don't actually need tractors. Because when you talk about agriculture, everybody's talking about tractors, 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 tractors. No, it's not just tractors. Tractors are not the solution. You know, we need to have a mechanization centers where they can provide services for you. And that's what we're trying to do. All right, now I do appreciate that you have these farmers, you, you, you provide the services of the plowing and the, the cultivation and all that. But what happens? There's no way in the crop can grow without water. And we have a big problem with the issue of water in this country polluted by illegal land sale operators and then the effect on the amateur as well. So how can we gel this in order to, to, to save back the, the, the nation at the end of the day? Yeah, you know, um, it's not just the land sale. All the big money is in there. If you go to Okwasi and Kaduna, you don't see water. It's taken away. So it's not just the land sale. We shouldn't restrict it that way. You know, when we look at Hamatan, like I said, Hamatan was there before we were there. Let's look at what we have. You know, for me, I'm not interested. I think I want this to be a discussion about where we've been looking to find solutions. And I think if we look at, you look at all the irrigation projects, look at the water we have. The white water going all the northern and coming to all the northern parts. There are dams that were there for the water. In fact, uh, DFAT, in collaboration with MOFA, have done marvelously well. I'm telling you, they have dug. Irrigation canals, they need people. Those infrastructures are there, but people have to go and use them. So I think we need education. And if we just practice that, if we get involved in that just 10%, it will be of the past. Now, what do you think that uh, some of the pollution of these rivers that is taking away have been practicing? Um, you know, I think we need.
need to revisit our environmental policy and then certain restrictions and certain education need to be done and we need to educate our locals regarding the effect of climate change and I think that's it. So that has to be done. That has to be done. That's a way forward. All right, so uh, we have lots of people who start thinking of stopping food and since they said there's going to be a food water shortage and then it will affect food availability, let me start that person thinking, would you, what, what would be your stance? My stance is that uh, we get one acre of irrigation. It's up to you to prepare the land. And we will help you. A and G will help you to prepare the land. We will help you to get the seeds. We will help you to get the fertilizer. We will help you to manage the farm. So onions and okra and all that, you, you, will, not, you will have to take it. So I think it's not just stopping food. When you stop food, you put food in the ground. What else do you need to do? And that's where the source, the, of, the the source, source of the food. Yeah. Well, we're a vast land. Just look at the country. We're a vast land. We're a vast infrastructure. The government has put infrastructure in place. And look at that. All of us sitting here. And which infrastructure is that? Talking? We're talking about irrigation infrastructure. Yeah. We're talking about dams. All over the country. Yeah. But that doesn't end the story of the farmer. The farmer needs fertilizers. So that is where the government comes in. That's why the government that should also be supported that's by the government. government. That's why the government has to come in. And the government has to start shifting this to the private sector. All right. Government. Let's go for this black and the white. Thank you. Back. Stay with us. Aborigines Beach and Sports Management in collaboration with TV Africa brings to you the Battle of the Rising Stars. Between Isaac Dobe and Michael Papo in the WBA WBO African Featherweight Championship. Father had it. Right, we have a call on line. Yeah, hello. Hello, Yes, yes, good morning. Thank you for joining us. What's your name? Turn down the volume of your TV set. 
So how I like I was saying, we need to we did, we need to get back to Africa. Like I was talking about. So the entire procedure is there. What yeah. to do? Yeah, yeah, what to do? To start everything from that scratch. Is, that is it from scratch. Mm. You know, just like you go to the kitchen to prepare food. You know, it's the same thing. You know, we need to get back to basis whereby every house need to have a diary, a back diary. At the end of the weekend, if you have your village, go over there and let's do a half an over. Uh, 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 encourage into agriculture. Mm. Uh, 
Champions time. I don't know where you are. I was alive. Each house, each minister had a farm. Every weekend they came to the farm. You know, we have to come to the practical basis. As a people, one nation, one people, one destiny. It's not government. The right. people are the government. Let's keep this going. Yeah, hello. Hello.
Jesus in prayer. But remember, the best place to be in this world is to be in the will of the Creator. When you are there, you simply untouch the masses of time.